what's up my name is Technobay here for troubleshoot and welcome back to another video in this quick video i'll be showing you how to set up a minecraft forge server so you can play with your friends it's super simple so to begin in the description down below you'll find a download link for minecraft forge simply click the link and you'll be taken across to this page over here as long as it says mc 1.18 and you have the 1.18 tab selected on the left hand side what we have to do is click installer here to download the minecraft forge installer this is both for the client and the server versions, so don't worry if this page looks familiar to you. Simply click skip add in the top right when the timer runs out and the forge jar will then download. You may be asked to click keep, if so, click it. Then all you have to do is click on the jar file to open it up, or of course open it from your downloads folder. If it doesn't open or it opens in something like WinRAR, what you need to do is make sure that you have Java installed. If you're not sure, check the description down below for a guide on how to do so. On top of that, if you do have Java installed and the program isn't opening up like it has for me, you'll find a link to a jar fix guide. Clicking that and following the quick steps should get you across to a point where this window is open on your screen. Super simple. When it is open as such, make sure you already have the client installed if you haven't already, so click OK with install client selected. And when you're done with that, select install server and you'll see a warning like this. All you have to do is click the three dots and navigate across to your desktop or somewhere that you'll be hosting the server. Then create a new folder like I have here, Forge 1.18 on my desktop and click OK, then OK once again. Now a couple of files will download and if we open up the folder, you'll see that this is slowly being populated with other files. Eventually when this completes, we'll be able to configure our server and start it up, ready for friends to join. There we go, click OK and we're done here. Now, inside of this folder over here that we just installed Forge to, you'll see run.bat and run.sh. On Windows, you can safely delete run.sh as such. Now we're left with just run.bat. All you have to do is open up user JVM args, and inside of here, we'll be able to set how much RAM we want to give the server. All that you have to do is uncomment the line. So this one over here, remove the hashtag and the space as such, and we'll have hyphen XMX 4G. All you have to do is adjust this to the amount of RAM that you'd like to give the server. How do you figure out how much RAM to give the server? Well, hold Control, Shift, and press Escape to bring up the Windows Task Manager. And inside of here, head across to Performance at the very top, then Memory. In here, you'll see a graph and the total amount of RAM on your computer in the top right. Right below the graph, you'll see In Use and Available RAM. I, of course, have an absolutely ludicrous amount of RAM, so I can give the server 8 gigs plus happily. The more RAM you give your server, the better it performs up to a certain point. So how much should you give yours? Well, keep in mind that you're currently using a certain amount of RAM on your computer. You'll then be using some RAM for the actual game itself on top of that. Then you'll also maybe have a browser going on top of that, and you'll need a tiny bit extra for Windows and other programs to run happily in the background. Whatever you're left with after that estimation is what you can give the server. So how much that is, is really up to you. All you have to do is adjust the number here from four to whatever other number. We'll leave it as just form and hit control S to save. The capital G next to the number here tells Java it's gigabytes that you're talking about. And XMX is the maximum amount of memory that, that the server can take. Simply close it and you're now able to double click on run.bat. All that this does is runs the server file. So double click and a couple more files will generate, then hit any key to continue and open eula.txt. Inside of here, change it from false to true, save it, control S and close it. Then you should be able to double click on run.bat and your server will boot up as you're hoping. Inside of here, you'll also find the mods folder and the config folder where you'll be messing around with mods later on. This video won't go into installing mods, but those are there for you to mess around with yourself. Now, the server's simply starting up and we'll be able to join it on our own client in just a moment. If you don't want this window of here, all you have to do is open the run.bat in a text editor once again and simply add to the very end of this line over here, space hyphen no GUI. Save it and close it. Then I'll close the server and run run.bat once again. This time, you won't see that other window popping up. Whether you want it or not, that's really up to you. There we go, our server is now running. All you have to do is fire up the Minecraft launcher, then launch up Minecraft Forge, which if you need some extra help, you'll find a video for that in the description down below. 
Now we're on the main menu. All you have to do is click multiplayer over here and add server in the bottom right. You can give it whatever name you want, but for the server address, enter either localhost or you'll be entering 127.0.0.1 and click done at the very bottom here. You'll then be able to join your server and you'll see some text on the left hand side in this window here when we have done so. There we go. We're now connected and playing on our own Minecraft 1.18 Forge server and friends are able to join, but there's a couple more steps you need to follow if you would like friends to join. First of all, if they're on the same local network as you, i.e. an ethernet cable to the same router that you're connected to, or of course the same Wi-Fi network. In that case, all I have to do is replace localhost that we typed earlier with your computer's local IP address. You can get this by holding start and pressing R and in here type CMD, then hit enter. Then we'll be typing IP config, enter once again, scroll up and we're looking for the way that we're connected to the internet. In my case, it's ethernet adapter ethernet. Under IPv4 address, you'll find your computer's IP address and all you have to do is get them to enter this IP address and they'll be able to join your server, assuming that you don't have third-party firewalls blocking port 25565 or the Minecraft server and of course you've allowed it through the Windows firewall. If your friends are outside of the same local network as you, you'll have to go through another few steps. Those few steps are called port forwarding. I won't be going through them in this video, but I do have a super short, concise, and easy to understand video that explains port forwarding from start to finish, and even port forwarding if you have more than one router connected to each other before your computer. It's super simple and broke down really easily in that video, which you'll find linked in the description down below. In the video I forgot to mention, you do need to type save hyphen all when you're done playing in order to save the world inventories and everything else. Then type stop and hit enter, and when you do so, the Minecraft server will gently be brought to a close. Now we've successfully saved everything, inventories, worlds, etc, etc, and we've even stopped the server, so you're able to shut down your computer and boot up the server the next time you'd like to play, etc, etc. But regardless, that's really about it for this quick guide. Thank you all for watching, my name's been Techno here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!